You may not know that I have gotten into 3D printing in the last eight or nine months with an Ender 3 Pro, and I've really been enjoying it. I have something running at least weekly, it seems. Gojo Doke, a seller on Amazon, reached out to me randomly to see if I was interested in testing out some silk PLA rainbow filament, which is what I've got here. And I said, sure, because actually I'd been looking to buy some and just hadn't done it yet. So this is what showed up. When it arrived, it came in a brown cardboard box. It was generic. It didn't have any brands on it. And inside the spool was vacuum packed. And I'll show a few pictures of that. And it was non-receivable. I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that the seller here doesn't manufacture this. And they probably buy it, resell it. Because on the box, I couldn't find any manufacturer's names or anything like that here. And this has a slow progression of colors that you can see here on the spool. It's purple, blue, green, yellow, red, pink, before it kind of cycles over again. So let's take a few, look at a few things and then I'll show you what I've made with it so far. So here are my calipers. Hopefully you can kind of see that. We'll see how if it measures 1.75, measures 1.89 here on my calipers, 1.71 there. Those have all been through the extruder. So let's check there. 1 1.7, 1.73, 1.68. Now I did notice on, as it was going into my printer at the extruder, it did leave behind quite a bit of kind of almost dust. And I don't know what that's from, but this is the only filament I've ever had that does that. It didn't seem to affect the printing quality but it would build up and possibly cause a problem for you. I ran mine at 207 centigrade with a bed at 50 without an issue. So let's take a few things and look at what I made. I always print just a uh, filament sample here. I've got some default settings that I run this through. I could have optimized this. Silk filament takes some work to print and you should print it a little bit slower. And I didn't change any of that on here. So it's really not a great print quality, but it gives me the color, which is what I'm primarily looking for out of this. I did a calibration cube. Again, default settings, so the top's not very good, but cube came out fine. No big issues there. It's not the best quality, but it's not the worst. And then I did a retraction test here. Retraction tests aren't something that I run a lot of. I'm still kind of getting used to them, experimenting with them. So that's kind of what that is. Same way with temp towers here. I specifically, this is the first time I've actually done a temp tower. I just haven't found uh, needed. Uh, this isn't a great model and one I probably won't use again, but here are the lower temperature ranges and then here are the higher temperature ranges where it seemed to do a little bit better. And that's kind of where I guessed. And 210 was somewhere in the middle here. What I really tested this on was a couple of these hex bowls that I made. These are candy bowls. It's a design I found on Thingiverse and I thought it would work really well with the rainbow, and I think I was right. This is the very first one I printed. I had a slicer setting wrong. I don't normally use pressure slicer. I'm using a Cura user, and I had something wrong in here. And then when trying to melt a few of those with a heat gun, I got a little bit too close. So I made another one, and this is the one that I think really turned out well. We've got some pictures of it outside. It's got a nice shine to it, and you can see it printed pretty clean. There was just minor small fibers here that I was able to clean up with a heat gun without an issue. I really like this blue. I think the blue is pretty cool. It didn't end up printing on top, which is a little unfortunate, but you can see an almost complete color cycle. And if I kind of print it, put these two head to head here, kind of like this, you can kind of see the order that things take. I guess it'd be more like this uh, design uses 48 millimeter, 48 meters of filament. And you can see it's not a quite full cycle of color change. This is a pretty slow color changing filament. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not gonna be appropriate for smaller models or anything like that. I did get this uh, to run pretty well when it was slower without an issue. This print took 26 hours at 0.12 layer height and it came out pretty good. I'm running on a steel PEI sheet and I had no problems with adhesion or anything like that. And it really didn't leave any residue behind which has been a problem with another silk filament that I have. So if I had to guess the color changes about every eight meters or so so you're not going to want to print really small things with this as i said before but bigger things like this you should get pretty good results overall i would buy this filament again if i needed it i have plenty left over here that i think i'll make some things with in the future the price seems to be in line with others that are available on amazon it's a little bit more expensive than your traditional pla or pla plus and i'll have a link to where you can pick it up as well as a link to the candy bowl i printed here in the comments and description below so if you're interested in picking it up, let me know. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll check out on the next video. Thanks.